What up, world? My name's Josh. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about coding your BMW with an app called Beamer Code. So the other day I just got my VGate OBD2 port. It is the iCar Pro 2. So I'll leave a link in the description if this is something you're interested in. This just plugs into the OBD, OBD port down here. You'll know it's connected when it starts flashing lights. So I'll show you guys the interface. Um, I've had a lot of free time on my hands lately. So I've been, for the past couple of years, I've been thinking of content creation and what I can create. And I really didn't know what I liked enough to do something and around a content or anything to create but i figured why not start making some videos just design something so i've been looking into a couple programs that unfortunately aren't compatible with my old school 2011 macbook so i gotta figure out some editing software but for now i'm um, just gonna hopefully i can figure out how to screen record and have that pop up over here so i can show you as i walk through but um, so yeah let's get started so I've already done a couple things. So like I said, I just got this. So one, I'm not an expert, but I did graduate from college with a degree in computer information systems. So I'm familiar with the procedure of coding. Uh, disclaimer, do this at your own risk. It's not something that you should do if you're uncomfortable making changes with your car. So let's get into it. Um, I like to code with my seatbelt on, being that BMW has like a mechanism in the seatbelt that as long as it's connected that it keeps something in the ECU on so you want to just make sure it's on and then you want to put the car in accessory mode just hit the stop start once you can put it where the engine's on too but that's just preference make sure the air is off lights are off kill as much power as possible so I'm going to start the screen record. I also like to put my phone in airplane mode so that way there's just you make sure there's no interruptions, nothing to yeah. All right, so this is the interface. This is the app Beamer Code. Go in, connect, you find your vehicle. We're in an F22 2 series. Hit connect, it's going to take a little bit. So, yeah, like I was saying, just be careful. This is something that, I mean, it's relatively straightforward. It's pretty easy. If you don't know what you're doing and you're unsure of making these types of changes to your car, just don't do it. Um, I had an issue that uh, I'll bring to the light of day just as a point of reference to raise awareness on just... I had a retrofit, or I have, not had, in present tense, have a retrofit rear view camera in my car. So the reason I'm explaining this error is not to just scare anybody, but just to make you aware, just being careful. Um, so when I went into the head unit, you can change the, the startup display animation. Um, I wanted to change it from connected drive to the end performance. The end performance is really cool, but it, it was reading an error being that my harness was connected to the multimedia interface to the rear view camera since it's a retrofit. So I had an error. So my first day coding, I was a little nervous, honestly, I can't lie. Uh, it just wasn't working. My head unit was just, they said error in the app. The iDrive display wasn't responding. It was just a whole big thing. But luckily enough, I knew immediately it was because of the camera, but I didn't know for sure. But if there's any issues, you can email the developer and he's actually pretty responsive. So that was cool. He confirmed what I thought it was and yeah, no biggie. Everything's smooth sailing. So uh, what I went into, yeah, you can instrument cluster, C modules. There's a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, the advanced crash safety module if you want to turn off the dong of like when your car is when you're driving you don't want to put your seat belt on it's that annoying dong there's little things like that i'm going to go into the front electronic module this is most likely really where you'll spend most of your time being that it's one of the larger files it takes a little bit so and this is where we can go in and change things like the mirror is folding in or out, or there's an option called a brake display force, which is, which I'm definitely going to do eventually. Maybe I'll make a video, maybe not, whatever. So, um, so instead of just when you're driving, you come up to a red light and you hit your brakes, the lights just turn on. You can make it so it flashes whatever preset you set it to, so make it flash like five times, whatever. Um, the reason why I haven't done that yet is because you have to go into expert mode. So when I mentioned just to be careful and do this at your own risk, um, everything on the main interface is pretty simple, but it's when you get into expert mode is when you have to be careful. 
Um, I've gone into it a couple times and I haven't done anything yet, but it's mostly in German. So when you're in expert mode, you really got to know what you're doing. You don't want to, you just don't want to do nothing stupid and by accidentally mess up the ECU because then that's just bad news bears. So other than that, so far I have done, for some reason, which doesn't make much sense, the 2015 F-22 we're sitting in right now for a comfort access, we can use the key fob wherever that is. We can use the key fob, let's say we're inside, it's a hot day, hypothetically, it's kind of shitty out in South Jersey right now, but you want to open the windows, you just hold the unlock button for a couple seconds, and it'll un unlock the windows, and it'll bring them down for you, but for some reason, it wouldn't click lock and lock the windows back up, so for some reason, it's kind of funny, because my 2009 E90 would do it, but this one didn't, so we're going to go in and... I've already changed it, but I'll show you what I did. So there's the brake force display I was talking about. You can go in and change it to flash and then do a couple more things. Um, for this, this is the comfort opening. That just lowers the windows. That's active, but for me, this was inactive. So the comfort closing, which I don't know why. BMW is BMW, whatever. So I set that to active, and it's literally as simple as that. All you would do is just go up to the top right of the screen, click code. It'll run the code, it'll reset the ECU, and this is where you just gotta be patient, because if you don't know what you're doing, this is where you might think, oh, like I just messed up the car, because the iDrive screen is gonna reset as the ECU resets. The instrument cluster is gonna light up. It's gonna have all these things pop up, nothing's wrong this is just how it does it it might pop up some sort of error message saying for me it was uh it was like chassis stabilization drive moderately but it's just what the process is going through the ecu has to take a little bit to recognize the code so that's fine then once it's done you just hit stop start turn the car off turn it on and then go check to see whatever you did so i'm also running through there's a bunch of stuff uh indicator for the flashing on the locking and unlocking so you uh, the mirrors will flash whatever amount of times you want them to. It's just so many cool different things. So for me, what I like to do is just a matter of preference. Um, I do one thing at a time. I'll just code something, let it run the process, disconnect everything, and then make sure it worked before I go on to another thing. Um, that's just preference, just what I do. Yeah, so I want to show you guys a little more. Um, I don't have the weather package, but the seat heating is sweet. You can set the presets to that. There's just so much cool stuff you can do. So then, once you're done, you go in, disconnect, bada bing, bada boom, and that's that. So I'm going to disconnect my ODB port, and I'll go show you what we did. Unlock, hold for a couple seconds. Windows down. Lock the car, hold lock for a couple seconds. Windows up. So yeah, just, just a cool little thing. I mean, like I said, just proceed with caution with doing this. You're obviously taking a risk, but I mean, if you know what you're doing, it's all relatively straightforward. Any questions, just ask. I can help out as best I can. Also, I mean, like I said, you can email the developer. He's very responsive. So it's pretty straightforward. It's really cool. Thanks for watching. Later.